Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, I'll be going over my Zane build in detail so you have an idea of what I run and get a better understanding of how everything comes together to make something pretty powerful. I'll be going over the skills I use and the gear that goes best with them. This build doesn't need top tier anointments or gear to work well, just set up the skills and you'll be good to go. It can handle anything. Now this topic fills the comment section more than anything else, well, other than how I sound like Mancubus from DLC2 which to me is kinda hilarious. Good meme guys, great, keep it going, woohoo, yeah! Um, cool, let's get back to the video. This video will help you get a better insight into how Zane works and how to get the most out of him. I'm always open for content suggestions, so if you have anything else you'd like to see, don't hesitate to ask in the comments below. If this video helped you out, I'd appreciate it if you could take the time out to give it a like. It helps justify the time I put into making it. And let's dive in. It's a build video, right? And everything starts with the skill tree, so we'll begin with those. The main goal with this build is to keep our action skills active, as that is where Zane is at his best, but we don't want to sacrifice any damage to achieve that. And I'll explain the thought process behind everything here. We'll start with the green tree or Zane's undercover tree and our main goal here is to get down to calm, cool and collected, the cornerstone of many Zane builds. Whenever Zane freezes an enemy his shield instantly begins recharging, if Zane's shield's already full he regenerates health for a few seconds. But the main one, if Zane's health is already full, his action skill cooldowns and durations are immediately reset. So the third one there is the main one that we want to be achieving so we can get our action skills up for as long as possible and we need full health and full shields to do that. So to get down to calm cool and collected we start with adrenaline, Zane gains increased action skill cooldown rate. Now that's kind of the opposite of what we want to be achieving, we want our action skills to be up all the time but when they're not we want to get them back up and active as quickly as possible and this helps to do it. We also put 5 into ready for action which increases Zane's shield recharge rate and his shield recharge delay so again that helps us to get our shields full to proc the last instance of cool calm and collected. We also put 4 into brain freeze which whenever Zane scores a critical hit on an enemy there's a chance they will be slowed. This fix stacks until the target is frozen so that helps us to freeze enemies again to proc calm cool and collected. We also put 3 into stiff upper lip, whenever Zane is damaged he gains damage resistance against that damage type, so that helps for survivability. But there is no rise to the occasion and this build does not have any passive health regeneration. So if you want some, you can put 1 into that, maybe take, take 1 out of adrenaline for that. Moving on now to confident competent, while Zane's shields are active he gains increased gun damage and accuracy. The more percent full the greater the bonus. And basically our shields are going to be active all the time and they're going to be full as well so we can get the full 35% gun damage and 33% accuracy for that one. Also put one into a really expensive jacket just so when we're on fire we don't want to be on fire for that long so that helps us to do that. We also put one into futility belt Zane gains resistance to non-elemental damage. After killing an enemy all elemental damage Zane takes is converted to non-elemental damage. So with the seeing dead class mod, that's basically plus 15% damage reduction all the time and when that's combined with stiff upper lip, that's plus 31% altogether and those two help with Zane's survivability. And with all those skill points, we've finally got down to calm cool and collected which is the main goal of this skill tree. When it comes to augments for our barrier, I went with this one which helps with health regeneration and reduces our shield recharge delay to help us proc calm, cool and collected more often and it also gives us a small reload speed boost as well. I also went with all rounder which although it does increase the cooldown rate of the barrier, it doesn't really matter when it's up all the time but it does also help the barrier to protect us more and means we take less damage. Onto the blue tree now or Zane's hitman tree and we put 5 each for violent speed and violent momentum. These two go hand in hand, violent speed makes us go quicker and violent momentum makes us deal more damage the quicker we go so this helps for one shotting bosses with a snowdrift relic and these two are really what you want to be putting in each time when you come to this tree. We also have two in cool hands just to help us with that reload speed and this one also stacks twice. 
drone delivery. I mean, if you don't pick this one, you're not going to be firing grenades, so might as well take it. And we also have salvation for the lifesteal. You can put two into this if you need it, but I found that one is enough. We also put one in Death Follows Close. I mean, it's one of Zane's best skills. It helps to increase our kill skill duration and also makes them 25% more effective. I also put four into Violent Violence, which increases our fire rate, and that's another one that stacks twice. And for playing dirty, I put two into this one. It kind of depends on your class mod here. You don't want it going over a hundred percent as then it's just a waste. But it's also good to understand that it's an additional projectile so if you have pallet guns like the Maggie or most shotguns it's only going to be one of those pallets so it's not going to be as powerful as it would be for say a redistributor where it's actually doubling the damage. It'll only double it a certain percentage. Lastly I put two into good misfortune. This is another one like salvation you decide just how much you need to put into it. Killing an enemy increases Zane's action skill duration. Now with seeing dead class mod, you don't actually need to kill people, you just shoot them and your action skills will last longer. It works hand in hand with calm, cool and collected and those two combined really help to keep your action skills up and it's just a great combination and definitely at least put one into this one. When it comes to augments for the sentinel, I grabbed bad doze which increases Zane's fire rate and movement speed for every enemy weakened by the drone. And I also grabbed Boomsday which adds a rocket pod to the sentinel. Now it will still be shooting its normal machine gun bullets, but by adding a rocket pod to it, it helps to proc kill skills with seeing their class mod more often. Basically the sentinel on its own can proc good misfortune and help your action skills to last longer. For Zane's orange tree or his doubled agent tree, we want to be putting 5 into synchronicity. Now this is the one where it really tells us that we should be having our action skills active to get the full gun damage boost. If we have both our action skills active, we get a 40% boost to gun damage and that's really why we want to be having our action skills up for as long as possible. Now I also put 2 into borrowed time which extends the duration of our action skills and I put 4 into Donnybrook and this could easily be 5 and I might be changing that soon but Donnybrook is one of Zane's best kill skills I mean it actually probably is his best it stacks twice increasing his gun damage and health regeneration so depending on how much you want to put into borrowed time and how well you can keep your action skills up maybe put 5 into this one and that's all for our skill trees in terms of gear, the first thing you want is a Seeing Dead class mod which you can get from any suitable loot source in DLC 1. It's by far and away Zane's best class mod. Each time Zane damages an enemy, there's a small chance to activate all of his kill skills. Zane is pretty mediocre without his kill skills or action skills active and this solves the kill skills side of things. If that wasn't enough, it also makes each kill skill 25% more powerful which when combined with death follows close makes them 50% more powerful and the numbers when you hover over your kill skills in your skill trees will reflect that. The one you see here is the one that I'm using for the gameplay in this video but you'll want to have enough so that you can switch them in and out depending on your combat situation. When it comes to artifacts, the pearl of ineffable knowledge from DLC2 is a good one. An electric banjo dropped from the Psycho Billies who you fight here in the Amber Mire is also a good choice to up the redistributor's damage. Or a Victory Rush which you can get from Sloth who hangs out around in this area of Conrad's Hold. When looking at prefixes, you'll want a Snowdrift Relic in your arsenal to make the most of violent speed and violent momentum, but outside of that, the stat boosts that come with the typical relic are more important than the relic itself. For shields, I'd suggest two that will serve you best. Ideally, you want to be running a transformer, which you can get from Killer Bolt in Letra City. The reason you want a transformer is for the ammo absorption and the immunity to shock damage. Shock damage also refills shields, so you're more than immune to it. The recharger will also fit perfectly as it helps to keep you alive and your shields full, which makes keeping your action skills up a whole lot easier. You get one from Eris McEnforcer located around in this area in the underground of Electra City. In terms of grenades, because only your drone will be throwing them every so often, look at that as a chance to freeze people and proc harm cool collected. The best grenade for that is a cryo recurring hex, which has an increased chance to drop from the sky bullies who you can find in this area of the anvil. 
On to weapons now, and I'll be picking two from the assault rifle, SMG, pistol, and shotgun classes. It used to be that Zane needed cryo guns to maintain action skill uptime, but with this build and seeing dead, that's not required, so don't be thinking you need to limit yourself to cryo weapons. Good misfortune also plays a big part in keeping action skills active, as mentioned before. You also don't need to spend hours farming for the 100% bonus cryo damage while Sentinel is active anointment. All of these guns I'm about to go over had no problem freezing enemies or proccing kill skills to extend the time. And this build doesn't need a lot of effort to make running the slaughter shaft on Mayhem 4 easy. So for SMGs my first pick would have to be the redistributor which synergizes extremely well with Zane and his barrier. You can only get one from Wotan in the Maliwan takedown. I'm using a corrosive one here which wouldn't be my first pick and it's still absolutely sredge in the slaughter shaft. I've explained this gun many times but in short when your barrier is active its bullets will change to nearby enemies causing absolute havoc. The chain effect not only deals extreme amounts of damage but also freezes people and procs kill skills like nothing else. With this and good mixed fortune your action skills will never go down. My second pick for SMGs would be the Hyper Focus which is dropped from the Power Troopers around in this area of Atlas HQ. It doesn't come close to what the Redistributor can do but is a solid replacement. On impact bullets spawn out the sides of your target and will ricochet off a world surface and often back into them. The extra bullets and fast fire rate help it to proc kill skills and it's also very good at freezing enemies regardless of the element. One on one it can beat the Redistributor for pure damage and is better when tackling single bosses but lacks the mobbing strength, although it is still a good alternative and much easier to farm, especially now that the Maliwan takedown drop rates are abysmal. For assault rifles, either the Soul Render or Clairvoyance from DLC2 is a great choice. The Soul Render can come in any element and can only be obtained by defeating Tom or Zam, who you fight here in Heart's Desire. The Soul Render shoots fast, dealing high damage and also fires homing skulls on top of that. It rips through health bars, can freeze enemies and easily proc kill skills to extend your action skill uptime. Doesn't really matter what version you get, Cryo will make it easier when it comes to freezing but I'd do fine with my radiation version here. If you don't have the DLC, a Star Helix is a good replacement for the Soul Render. The Clairvoyance is also great because of its high damage and the fact that it always comes in Cryo. You can get one from Critchy, located here in DLC 2. The clairvoyance typically comes in standard semi-automatic but you can get a masher or gatlin variant as well. The latter will make it fully automatic. With the clairvoyance lacks in proc and kill skills it makes up with pure damage and its ability to freeze targets. Critical hits will stick explosives to your opponents that explode after a short time and if you stick multiple they'll explode at the same time from massive damage hit. It's a great gun and it suits Zane very well. For shotguns you just need an anarchy, it's so powerful it's ridiculous. You can get one as a world drop from the second DLC. It becomes more powerful the more people you kill or the more you empty your mag, up until a point. At max stacks it's a beast and stacking up is easy, although you can pre-stack before you start your fight. The cryo one freezes enemies in a single shot but any version will do so just as well. It's Borderlands 3 on easy mode, your action skills will never go down and you will never die, as long as you don't run out of ammo. The Lob is another shotgun you should have, although it doesn't synergize that well with Zane. However, playing dirty can double its damage output when you're lucky, and it does proc kill skills decently well too. The synergy is lost there as it doesn't freeze people, but that all changes with a cryo version. If you don't have a sentinel cryo anointment on your Lob, a standard cryo version is Zane's next best thing, but you can pull out any version when you want to deal some serious damage. However, there is still times when the damage doesn't register, which continues to bug me. Lastly, for pistols, I'd recommend the Maggie or the Hellshock. The Maggie is hard to get as you have to fight tremendous wrecks at the end of the cistern of slaughter to get it, but when you do have one, the Maggie procs kill skills and freezes enemies like nothing else. This is thanks to its multiple projectiles that each have a chance to do so. There's 6 in total and it also deals high damage on critical hits. If you need that insta freeze or action skill duration extension, the Maggie won't let you down. The Hellshock is rapid fire fury in its every sense. It can only be dropped by Gigamind who you fight here in the Meridian Metroplex. 
The Hell Shock is the only top tier anointment weapon showcased here and it really shows. Outside of that though, it is still a great gun, particularly when dealing with shielded flesh targets. It shoots at a rapid pace which is good for both freezing enemies and keeping those kill skills going but you'll have more difficulty freezing enemies than I do here without the anointment. The standard version is still great though and is well suited to every aspect of combat. So that about wraps it up for this build guide, let me know what you guys think. I hope you enjoyed it and can take something away from this video to become better and grow as a vault hunter. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one.